Hey guys, Mike here. So a lot of information to update you guys on. I'm going to update you on what seems to change daily, which is what the market is expecting for these rates, which absolutely affects the markets. Remember what this rally was all about in the first place. And then we're going to talk about what's going on with wages real quick, because that will obviously affect what the Fed thinks. And you're probably going to be surprised what's going on with wages. I know a lot of people are going, what? Really? That's happening right now? And then we're going to talk about the charts, of course, NVIDIA in particular, that one right there. Woo! The big engine that just can't be stopped, right? Netflix just report earnings. We're going to talk about that one. And then, of course, Tesla, they report earnings tomorrow. But I want to update you on something I said yesterday. Thanks to somebody in the comments uh, for what they told me. But first, Netflix, you can see they reported earnings. So if you're holding this uh, stock, don't worry, though. And by the way, I just want to say, does anybody know they still had this business? I feel dumb when I saw this today. I totally forgot they had this business because I guess I guess we've been streaming so long and everything. I just hadn't seen one of these. I used to get this way back in the day. feels like forever ago. But I guess they're finally going to shutter the DVD business, Netflix is. So, you know, they let me know in the comments if you're still using that. Are you surprised they still got it? Now, of course, it fell off a cliff as soon as it reported earnings. It went down almost 11%, but don't you fret, because last time I looked as I'm recording this, it's only down like 5.75%. And, of course, what happened to send it over the edge? They beat EPS barely, but then revenue, of course, came in a little bit light, but more importantly, it's all about the subscribers. I missed it by a country mile, 1.75 million for new subscribers, and you can see what they expected. So let me know in the comments if you're holding that one. Now, talking about yields, the three-month yield, right? A lot of people look at the three-month, 10-year predict recessions. But this thing right here is back at a level we hadn't seen since 2007, right? And when we look, the probability of the 25 basis point hike as of May 3rd now is up to 90%, okay? Remember, this thing was like 0%, then it went to 25%. Now we're at 90% on this one right here which I guess shouldn't be any surprise. But then when you look, what the Fed says versus what the market is priced in. And so you see the bottom line, that is four, six, right? Day before March payroll. And then it's like, oh, we're cutting, we're cutting. It's gonna cut out, boom. See all these cuts right here taking place. All of a sudden, 417, they're like, oh, well, wait, maybe they're gonna do a hike in May, June, and July, is a chance of. Then maybe we get some cuts, right? But then there's what the Fed's saying, right? May, May 5.125% and then just hold. And that's basically what they're saying. And so, you know, again, this is what the market's expecting. So it keeps saying you, oh, we got stuff priced in and we're forward looking. It's forward and looking on the liquidity part, right? It's forward looking on rate cuts, things of that nature. That's what it's looking at. That's why this is important to keep up with this. And you can see by this chart right here, this is the implied Fed funds rate as of May 2023. You can probably make that a little better going from 4.75 in March up to around 5.05. So all this just keeps ticking up, okay? And that will affect the market. Now, when we look at wages, this will affect inflation, which will affect the Fed's decision on what they want to do with rate hikes and how long they want to hold them. According to this, wages are actually positive now for the first time since this whole thing began. I showed you some quartiles, right? The lowest quartile, their wages kind of basing out the higher quartile, going up so it depends on when you know whose wages are actually counting in here which are counting all of them but and again as inflation comes down right if wages stay where they're at now or continue to tick up which they are of course this is going to be positive so that's good news for quite a few people and this is the wage growth tracker as you can see it's the three month average here and you can see it's starting to tick back up i showed you guys this i think it was two weeks ago all right so it's coming down a little bit starting to tick back up when you look again what was the average Right, right here was basically where it was supposed to be for years, and you see where it's at now. And if you get anything out of this, guys, please hit that like, subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And if you're new, think about subscribing. If you like this content, I really appreciate your support, which I'm happy for people, right? I mean, if you were making more money, that's good, all right? And I mean, if that's the part that's going to affect inflation, believe it or not, I'll take it. It's the other part the companies are doing when they're actually raising their prices much higher than what the inflationary costs are that bother me the most, right? And so, but that's just me. Now, that leads us into what do you see happening in the market right now? You see a lot of banks reporting, and they don't have to be great. Some of the banks were good. Some of the banks were okay, whatever. But remember, they got the Fed stopping, you know, backstopping them. And so that's being taken into consideration. But what you're not seeing is banks fall off a cliff, right? Where people go, oh, my God, it's coming to an end. You're also not seeing so far, and we just really got into it, these terrible earnings. Right? I mean, Netflix didn't have a great earnings. But with Netflix, watch how the market absorbs it. Watch where it opens up tomorrow. Watch how it actually goes over the next week. See, and because what's been happening, this is what I talked about before earnings season started. 
these hedge funds, the big money seems to find one little thing to grab onto as a positive out of all the negative and then just try to ride it up, right? So you go, this don't make any sense. We're looking out three to six months, right? Like things are gonna be better three to six months from now in the economy. And maybe they will, who knows? Maybe we can actually set up these rates for a long period of time and all this, with all this debt and everything else and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. Could be the case, I'm not saying it's not. But if you wanna look at the difference in what's happening right now, I always like to look at triple leverage ETFs because it shows me the move easily. And FAS has a lot of the larger banks and they've actually reported you know, good earnings, believe it or not. And you see it's been going up, right? So people have been piling into that and everything. Then when you want to look at the regional banks, you can see this right here. It, it's setting at an area it hadn't been in since 2020, right? Around between 6 to $7. You can see the fall off right there. It just fell off a cliff when all this bank stuff started going down. And like I said, hadn't been there since 2020. If we look back on the weekly. And so, again, a lot of people trying to like, I know people personally like getting into this because it's just so cheap at this point in time. But right now, it is stabilized between that price. And so a lot of people are either buying the fear uh, and of course, and there's the 2020 I was talking about, and then it popped back up. But it took a it took time, right? Because people are more willing to go into the bigger banks because obviously there's way less risk in them than there is these smaller banks, right? And so this is, at least gives you a snapshot picture of each one to see really what investors are even thinking or doing in this kind of stuff, right? And that leads us into the SPY. These will be quick because the SPY literally did nothing today. As you can see right here, this is called Killing Premiums Day, okay? That's what this was. I mean, it gapped up, sold off, and then just traded sideways uh, within a very small, I mean, it was like 0.25% range or something uh, all day long and just killing premiums, pretty much all it did. The Qs, as you can see, have finished above the volume shelf right here. So it closed above that right there, which is actually good for it. Bulls are still in charge. You listen, really ain't doing much. I mean, it's just coiling up and stuff, waiting to see what the next move is going to be. And of course, tech earnings will absolutely matter, right? So Netflix will be one of them. And we'll see. And then Tesla will be the, the other shoe dropping next week. I'm sorry, dropping tomorrow. And then next week, you'll get your big dogs reporting. And we'll see if this thing can finally move. Because I swear that's what it seems to be waiting on right now, if you kind of look at it. Plus, with weekly OpEx this week as well, that will definitely have an effect on it. Now, NVIDIA. Hit a 52 week high today. I saw somebody come out and upgrade this stock from 150 to 350. And I know somebody said in the comments, probably two weeks ago, like, oh, you don't want to short the stock? I'm like, no. And the reason why, because it reminds me of what Tesla's done. It reminds me of what Nvidia did. When it just goes and these euphoric runs, you know, and I have a trend line set right there. I don't know if you can see it. I was waiting for it to break that before I even thought about shorting it and it bounced. So I'm like, no, thank you right now because. Again, it's at that supply zone, but the problem with NVIDIA, as I pointed out, on the weekly, it can go oversold for, or I'm sorry, overbought for weeks, right? It looks like the MACD wants to roll over. You know, it sure does. And it's in that supply zone, right? Going, heading towards that trend line, which it's rejected off of before. And so, you know, that's kind of what I'm waiting on, being patient on this. And, and another thing, when you're looking at this and putting in the comments what you think, is this accumulation or is it distribution? If it's accumulation, we're gonna move higher. If it's distribution, boom, we fall off a cliff, right? And so I'm not gonna be the one jumping on this because a lot of people short try to short it, keep getting hammered by it. I'm good to stay where I'm at on this one for right now. Now, another thing I like to look at too is SMH, right? This is a semiconductor ETF. And you can see it's been in this ascending channel for a long time moving up here. Hadn't quite hit the supply, hit it once, got rejected, and now we're heading back up to it again. Its biggest holding is NVIDIA. I think 25% of it's NVIDIA, and then the next one is Taiwan Semiconductors. So again, I like to look at these to kind of give me an idea of what the whole sector is doing because this is a cyclical sector, right? So if this actually breaks through uh, this pattern here, then I'll know what NVIDIA is doing because it makes up 13% of this thing, right? So we'll see if it gets to the supply zone or not again. Now we look at Tesla, sitting right there on that volume profile right there. And you can see the gap right above it. So this thing, depending on what happens, earnings-wise can move quickly. We all know Tesla can move quickly. Weekly move 170 to 200. If it has positive earnings and the market accepts that, that's only 8% move. That's way too low for Tesla. But anyway, we all know it can move faster than that. But again, it's setting up that trend line. So we'll see if it finally breaks above the trend line, makes a deciding move. Everybody's just sitting there waiting on earnings. You can look at the chart and just see that plain as day, right? Now, this brings me to the tax credit because I didn't know there was an earnings part to this. And so if you have a modified adjusted gross income that is less than 300K or households that submit joint filings, 
you can qualify households where one person files 225k or a single person 150k and then if i scroll down here you'll see the list now, these are the teslas that get the full tax credit right there on the left hand side down below and then for the partial you see it is the model three standard range rear wheel drive one that gets it and then the ones that don't qualify for anything you can see it's the model x and the model s so just to update you on that again thank uh, the person in the comments for that now apple apple had a big day today because obviously it closed above that all-time high trend line right there still in this rising wedge right here and actually started off really hot and then cooled off but the one thing about this one is, thanks to Charlie Baleo on, on Twitter over there, this right here, as far as we know, all time, at least going back to 1980, makes up 7.1% of the S&P, which is the highest that we know of. And you can see 5% XOM back in 2008, 4.9% Microsoft in 99, it looks like, and then 6.4% for IBM. And that's right, folks, the younger folks, that is. IBM was a big company back in the day. And that was in the 80s. So Apple finally eclipsed all of them, right? 7.1% for a whole index. It's double digits for the Qs, by the way. And so the big question is, if it just keeps on going up, right? Has great earnings and gets to whatever, 200 a share, whatever we're aiming at. Think we'll get to 10%? I mean, could it, could it surprise us at this point in time? I don't think so. And of course, Tesla, let me know down the bottom what you think is going to happen with earnings, uh, whether the market's going to accept whatever they say, positive or negative. Now, that leads us into earnings. And as you can see, I already got the ones we've gone through highlighted. But starting tomorrow, Morgan Stanley. Now, we know this is where Mike Wilson's at, and he's based all, he's keep saying the market's going to fall. We'll have to see on that. Uh, U.S. Bank, of course, so it's going to be more banks, obviously. You got another regional bank down below that right there. Uh, and then in the afternoon, of course, I think this is what everybody's waiting on, Tesla. Boom. That's going to be the big one. And, of course, this will affect the Qs, right? That's what the Qs have been waiting on. Uh, and then besides that, you got Discover, which we'll pay attention to. This one usually gets hit harder than Visa or MasterCard if they report negative, especially if they're expecting us to be defaulting on our credit card bills so that's what i really want to hear from them are we spending and how much they setting up for defaults and then tomorrow as far as economic news is concerned it's all about the mortgages so the real estate business and then about crude oil so we'll see how this affects uh, oil prices at all and so there shouldn't be any earnings in the morning or any kind of economic data that should shift the markets like you saw last week and you can see the markets have kind of been kind of like eh bland right i mean just not really moving at all Again, you got weekly OPEX Friday, right? You got VIX OPEX tomorrow, okay? Which I'm uh, putting a video for the members for and working on that right now as we go out tonight. So, you know, those are the two things to keep in mind. Sometimes you do have these muted weeks when that is happening because you got a whole boatload of options expiring, okay? And so let me know what you think down in the comments as far as what you're seeing in the market right now and how it's accepting these bank earnings and everything else. And I really want to see the tech earnings because tech obviously has ran up huge uh, in 2023 already so if you got anything out of it hit the like and subscribe button i really appreciate it if you want to join the membership right down in the description 799 less than mcdonald's combo okay so i'll see you guys tomorrow have a great night yeah.